Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. that he's caught another giant catfish. So we're gonna stick around and see if we can catch up with him later. I'm Dana Phillips, Channel 14 News. Welcome to the deep, dark, and eerie places that hold the number one predator in freshwater. This is my world, the ancient battlefield between what lives above and what lurks beneath. It's the biggest fish of the year. It's a beast. It's a beast. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Back up, back up, back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Oh, here he is. He's gone. Come on. Come on here. Come on here. good as I'm going to do out here on this section of river, so this doesn't get any better, man. I'm going to wrap it up with that, take a few pictures, and I'm going to go out home. Let's get my head set. What a night, man. What a night. Let me get the hook out, and I'll show them to you one last time. Let me just get the hook out. Oh, I set that hook so good, too. He wasn't going anywhere. Anyway, come on, get the hook. Come on, he was. Oh, there we go. Look at that. 
<laughs> this is why I chase the whisker fish, people. Right there. Right there. I'm Eddie Brochen, licensed captain and professional fishing guide. There you go, boys. There you go, boys. There's your monster right there. This isn't just some passion. It's my way of life. And a big live green sunfish. Man, he's just running out. Like, this is a big fish, man. I spend most of my time on the water, sharing my boats, rods, tackle, and bait. But most importantly, my secrets on how to catch these freshwater giants. There are over a thousand species of catfish around the globe. So when I'm not working, I travel the world to find them. I'm on a mission to uncover the stories, use all my skills to catch them, and then release them in efforts to educate mankind and conserve these magnificent creatures. They are the sharks of freshwater, and I am the Whisker Seeker. The Whisker Seeker. Born in Evansville in 1971, uh, spent most of my early years uh, growing up on my grandfather's farm there in southern Indiana. Uh, he had a huge lake in the backyard, and that's where I was basically taught, you know, how to catfish at a very early age. About the time I was in the third grade, my dad moved us down to the border of Mexico, and the uh, largest body of water down there was Falcon Reservoir. That's when I became fascinated with catching big catfish. Spent a lot of time there camping on the reservoir with uh, my grandfather, uh, my dad, and uh, my Uncle Dean. This evening, my clients got really lucky as I took them way upriver one of my secret places to fish that is known to hold big flatheads. I'm going to take them out and hand them to you. Okay. You can primarily fight the fish off the front of the deck. Whoever's turn it is sits in the front or you can sit in the far front. Okay. Two of you can sit there and one in the far front if you want, whatever. But whoever's in the front is, is the man. you got four rods up there and you've got four in the back. They're all yours. Whoever they are, you're going to take turns. you got eight rods per person. Okay. Awesome. To get the strike. I'm not in any big hurry to set the lines because we're every bit a half hour early, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you'll notice. When, when the bite starts, you'll notice. You'll know it's coming, and as quickly as it comes, it's gonna go. It's gonna shut off. Here we go. That's what we'll use today. It's a perfect size six. Not very, nothing real big, but I, I don't have a whole bunch of real, real big bait in there today mm -hmm. because I didn't want to hinder your chances of catching fish. Yeah. I don't know if a 20 pounder is good or not, but I, I got a bunch of average size bait. The bigger the bait, the fewer the fish you're gonna catch nine times out of 10. I, I mean, last, 
last night um, when I was out here when we caught that 30, we hooked the biggest fish I've hooked probably in years. And I had a pound and a quarter red ear sunfish on there. Okay, a big monster sunfish. And it was the first one that got hit. Yeah. Okay, and I missed it. Okay, I missed it. I, I, I felt it too, oh. man, and then pot, it just came loose. And what did I do wrong, you know? But it happens, right? it happens. Oh, there he is. Look at that. Beautiful green. Catfish candy right there, boy. Yeah. And green look how, candy, look baby. how lively it is. Green candy. Look how lively. That hook is enormous. That's yeah. what we need. That's what you need, That's man. what we need. you just wind until you feel them set the hook. These, you need to, while he's running, 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 flip the switch, crank, 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 three or four times down, and then pop them and leave it up there, crank some more while it's still up there. And then again a second time, and then you can just wind down and then just try to find them. Okay, somebody takes me. Keep going, keep going. Oh. Time. Oh. oh, that's a big, keep the line tight at all times. That's a good sized fish. Yeah, man. Uh -huh. yeah, that's a rod. Oh. Wind that rod in. I'm considered a commercial fisherman. I've got a license as a commercial operator. I have to account my, uh, uh, catch and release uh, to the uh, Department of Natural Resources uh, every month. 90% um, of my charters are all uh, CPR, catch, photo opportunity and release. So we don't really harvest very many fish at all. Now, no one on my operations is allowed to keep any fish over 10 pounds. So if I get clients that come to me and say, uh, we're, we'd like to fill the cooler, and I said, that's fine. I'll even fillet them up for you and put them on ice, but they're all gonna be under 10 pounds. Keep him over here on the left. Ooh, big big, oh, big channel, that. about 10, 15 pound channel. Come on. Yeah. Big channel. Well, it might be a flat. That was like a flat, flat head, dude. Yeah, flat and it's only untouchable. Dude. Oh, it's a yeah. nice one, man. Take your time. Yeah. Go slow, go slow, go slow, go slow. Go slow. Go slow. Don't move, don't move. <laughs> He's not, he's not ready to come in yet. Oh. There you go, boys. The there you go, boys. There's your monster oh. right there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. Now That's I'm, a rod in the mouth. Now I'm happy, man. That's a beast, boys. That's what we right. came here for. Right there, congrats. Dude, this Thank is you. nice. Huh? That a boy, Nick. <laughs> All right, here's that's your fish. Let me get that. You, you get that. Let me get the Dude. hook out. Let me get him off. Dude, that is a healthy fish. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Gosh, that's a big fish. That is a monster, boys. <laughs> that's what we're you talking there, about. Nigga, nigga, nigga. Oh yeah. Get in there. You get in there. <laughs> He's mad, man. He's mad. Hold oh, up, Adam, baby. Oh, oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> here, Nick. That's a tricep bender. That's, old figure. That's what we came here for, boys, right there. And that was on the head. Yeah, that was on the head. Woo! Oh, yeah. My cameraman had to leave early this night, and that's a shame because right after he left, Abraham caught another flathead weighing over 30 pounds. I've been catching catfish for as long as I can remember which is why I think like a catfish, I often smell like a catfish. Oh, what is that smell? And some say I even look like a catfish. This is how I make my living. So to me, catfishing is serious business. These big cats must be protected and preserved for future generations. But there's a big problem. 
And when I first moved down here in 99, is you could come out here any time and catch a 30 or 40 pounder any, any time. Commercial fishing and illegal harvest has drastically reduced the numbers of these apex predators. 2000 or so, there was like 400 pay lakes in the tri-state area, which is right here with access to the river fish. And it went from 400 to over 1,000 in a short time, all going after the same fish. Boombill guys are a big time player in this. Yeah. Because they used to not, when they get blue cats that shit up in their net, they wouldn't, they throw them back. Yeah. They was at the spoon mill. Now, they get them, they take them, throw them holding ponds. And then they sell them. And then they sell them. At the same time, we had a commercial fisherman move in. I watched that guy run his nets. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I'm a bit of a numbers guy. And from what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing, I'm scared to death. You know, I rely on big catfish to satisfy the demands of my clients, so I've got some skin in the game too. But let's just do the numbers here on the low end. If it takes 10,000 pounds of big catfish to satisfy the needs of one pay lake, um, and there's over a thousand pay lakes here in the tri-state area, that's 10 million pounds of giant catfish per year. Now over 10 years, that's a hundred million pounds of giant catfish coming into these pay lakes from our river systems. Now I'm not a biologist, but I am positive that our river systems cannot sustain this type of harvest at this level. It's not possible. Catching big catfish in public waters doesn't just happen. There's a process to achieve success and it all starts with having the right bait. Well, we're heading out to gather bait right now for uh, tonight's flathead catfish excursion. Uh, the flathead is known as the number one predator in fresh water. Uh, and in order to be successful tonight, we need to prepare. Have you ever heard that term that you're going to perform to the level in which you train? I'm sure that most athletes out there in this world have heard that at some point or another. So today, in order for us to be successful, we need to gather the right kind of bait so that we can be successful tonight. All right, we need to buy a few crickets. I've got some, but not enough, okay? So we gotta get some bait before we can go gather bait. All right, come on. Okay, well we're just now ready to pull in here to one of my favorite state parks to go uh, catch us some little green sunfish, which is like the preferred bait fish for the flathead catfish. It's like candy to them. Now, uh, we're going to be doing some spot fishing today, so I'm going to need to wear some shades to be able to uh, spot them good in the water. All right, let's get going. Okay, all we got to do now is catch a bunch of bait and keep it fresh and lively. Lively being the key. When we gather our bait today, we're going to put it into a small bucket with an aerator, transfer it here to my cooler, and then from my cooler, we'll transport it to my house and get all the fish, the bait fish, into my bait tank. I got a 100 gallon bait tank at the house. That's where the bait will stay fresh throughout the entire afternoon and be ready to go for, for tonight's adventure, okay? Gotta keep the bait fresh and lively. I've been catching bait here at this state park for over 25 years now, and it always produces. I should be able to get enough bluegills and green sunfish to last the entire night. Mm. 
Most people don't realize that for every six hours of fishing charters I conduct, I have a full day of preparation the day before. But I don't mind because gathering bait for me is just as much fun sometimes. When hooking the crickets, I like to keep the barb of the hook inside the chest. That way I don't get debris on the hook because that can sometimes deter the bait fish from striking. You want the presentation to be as natural as possible. Not very big, but we're not in a position to throw anything back right now because we need a lot of them. This is what we're after right here, is little green sunfish. I know what you're thinking, well that's a little small for flatheads. Well you're right, it is a little small, but the water temperature is it's still very cold for this time of year. It's only 60 degrees. We had a, a really big storm move through last night, cooled everything down with cold front. So bigger is not always better when the water's still cold. We're gonna finesse fish these flatheads tonight using these little green sunfish. The reason we like these is because they're extremely active, they're very hardy, and they inhabit the same kind of uh, habitat that the flathead catfish does. The rocks, the log jams, you know, so they're uh, relatable to the flathead. Okay, I got a nice handful of uh, smaller green sunfish, but it's time to go after some big ones. There's always green sunfish hanging out here by this big chunk of concrete. And I usually hand line the presentation so I can place the bait right in front of the underwater caverns they hide in. The cricket draws them out every time. soaking wet but we got plenty of bait for tonight and that's the good thing uh, we're on our way back to the house now to get it taken care of put all the bait inside the live well and uh, then we can concentrate on getting everything else ready green sunfish and even a little crappie. But by far, that little green sunfish is the winner. bait tank here, I made it just a few days ago. Just a hundred gallon um, trough that you would use for livestock. I took uh, uh, some garden hose, 
and cut it, put it onto a bilge pump. I've got it running on a uh, 12 volt battery there. And I just charge that battery every day. I have actually have two batteries and I alternate back and forth to keep it fresh. During the making of this documentary over the last three years, I have reached out numerous times to multiple Pay Lake operators, commercial fishermen, and even members of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and they have all declined the opportunity to comment. So what does that tell you? In my opinion, what we have to do is we have to reach an agreement to where the biologists, the DNR biologists, they can come up with a, a number that we can harvest and you know make these pay lakes accountable for really taking care of these fish maybe if you have to there has to be regulations in line to where they uh, take care of their fish and are allowed a certain amount a year you know whatever they are it still would be nice to have the big fish but i certainly understand the other side too where people really care about these fish passionately and they just don't want them harvested out our rivers and put into pay lakes and mistreated and not taken care of. So I do see both sides of this and you know my hopes is one day that we can find a common ground to where we can all survive with. The biggest fear I have if the regulations do get passed in our favor is if the state departments will actually have the funding to enforce it. Let's, let's be realistic here. How many commercial fishermen are out there running fish around all the time, running nets? Do you think they're actually going to have the funds and the resources to actually go and regulate this? I think illegal harvest is going to be going on for a very long time, and I think we're going to begin to feel the effects of that um, immediately. All right, it's going to be a little chewy tonight, so we're going to put on a little extra something there to keep us warm because it Temperature has dropped quite a bit. Are you ready, Alex? Let's load up the bait. We got plenty of bait. Yeah, you have no idea how nice, man. Alex, if you want, uh, go ahead and load up those, all the stuff in the back. And I'm going to disconnect this battery, too, because we're taking all the bait out of it. There'll be no need to run it. Um, see, you'll, you'll see that? Those are our minnows. Those are our minnows. <laughs> yeah, we're going after some big ones. After we loaded up the bait, we headed down to the White River near downtown Indianapolis, one of the few places in the state untouched by commercial fishermen. It had been raining all day, so I knew it was going to be a great night to fish. I think what we need to do is set up the tripod on the very point, because the current's going to be on both sides of the point. Set up the upstream point? No, the downstream point. Downstream point. Point. Let's put one in the middle and two short the opposite side. And then the individual bank sticks, we can spread them out anywhere we want. Do you want to use a remote or not use a remote? That's really the matter at that point. Does that make sense? Yeah, and then the eddy, where's the eddy at? There's an eddy at well. The eddy is created right on the point. There's one in, just one right there on that point. So you can fish. That's why I want to set the tripod right there in that eddy. It's supposed to be rods and the individual ones fish in the current on each side. But that island, I mean I call it an island, but the sandbars are probably an island now because the current's going to be split. Where's the island's not there? Or the sandbar's not there? The sandbar's not there. I've got a backup plan. All right, that's, that'd be my only concern. <laughs> I really love this dragonfly airboat. It helps me to get to areas on the river that are usually impossible to get to because of shallow water. But I never worry about that with the little dragonfly because she runs on land just as well. Thing is we're not in a hurry, right? No, I'm good. <laughs> 
I gotta be at work first thing in the morning, but I'll be all right. I'll live. Well, you can do that when you're 22. Yeah. <laughs> Some relish and there you go, there you it's go. going, it's going. There he is, I got him. It's a nice one. It's a really nice Oh yeah, this is a big fish, fellas. Huge. Huge, huge. Okay. It's a nice one. Oh, it's a big fish, guys. Widen in those lines, Alex. Widen in those lines. Hurry up. I have a bad habit of thinking every fish is a giant, but to my disappointment, most of the time, they're just average sized fish. This is a big fish, fellas, here. Big fish. He's coming in. He's coming in. He's coming in. He's coming, he's coming. This is a big fish, fellas. This is a big fish. He's coming in. He's coming in. He's finally coming in. This is a nice one. Alex, the flathead. Hey, do you got one? No. Come here, help me land this fish. Bring in, land that one for me. Oh, that's big. a big channel. That's a big one. That's a monstrous channel. Oh, there you go. Pretty nice channel cat again. <laughs> we came down here to catch flatheads and all we're catching are these big giant channel cats here on the White River. But you know what? I mean, look at that. That is a nice fish. He's got the clamp on me right now. He's biting on my thumb, but look at the head on that. He's a monster. That's for sure. A nice monster of White River right there. All right, let's go ahead and turn him loose. one guys it's a really nice fish oh he's running big time oh he's out in the current this is this is a nice one oh this is a nice one Let me get this line out. okay i'm coming over here i'm coming over here there he is he's right here he's right here Dash. He's not that big. He's not that big. 
He is running. We got another one. I think it was the middle one there, Alex. This guy's running pretty good. Here he is, here he is. He's, it's a flathead. This one's a flathead. I saw this one for sure as a flathead. Come on up. Oh, man. <laughs> Woo. Even though he's not that big, he's still fighting pretty good. Come on. Come on, come on. Here he is, here he is, here he is. Yet. He's not done yet. Here he is. Here he is. Here he is. Okay, Alex, walk him back. Walk him back. Walk him back. Here he is. Here he is. No! Oh. Oh. Nice little flathead. He's not that big. But man, you can see why they are the number one predator in fresh water. Look at the size of the mouth on him, and he's only. Probably only about six, seven pounds. Hooked him right in the side of the mouth there. Oh, we got a strike, we got a strike, dude. Is he there? He was. Ah, a lot of action going on here, fellas. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set here. You take this rod. Here we go, look at that. A real nice. Freshwater flathead. Oh, another strike over there, another strike. Here we go, here we go. There he is, you got him? No, no, I missed him. Okay, back, back. <laughs> There's action. There's action here on the White River, ladies and gentlemen. But like I said, this is the number one predator in freshwater. He's got a monstrous tail. He's got real soft fins and a real flat head. Look at, the, look at that head. As flat as can be. And that's for fighting the current and for laying on the bottom. And you notice that their eyes are on the top of their head, which indicates that they're a predator. Number one predator in fresh water. It's not the 30 or 40 pounder we were looking for, but nonetheless, it is a flathead. It's what we came here for tonight. And I'm gonna go ahead and release him. So, put him back in the water. important to make sure that you, you flip up the bait runner because if not you're gonna hear the strike then you're gonna hear a big splash and that you're gonna know that that's your rod and reel setup just shooting across the river here and you're not gonna get it back with a big flathead or channel cat on the end of it so always make sure you set that bait runner. all right let's see what happens the American way right there boys now if we can just catch some fish. Yeah. Oh man. It's cold, look at that. Wow. Cold out here. Got it. Oh yeah, I got it. Yo, oh, it's a big fish, big fish, big fish. Big fish, fella. Big fish. This is a monster, guys. This is a big one. This is a big one. Let's come over here. I'm gonna come over here. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. This is a big fish. Big fish, dude. Big flathead. Big flathead. Yeah, turn the light on. This is a big fish here. This is a big fish, guys. This is the 20. This is the 30. This is the 40. I'm not sure. It's big, though. It's definitely a monster. This is a river monster right here in downtown Indianapolis, Indiana. Oh, this is a big one, guys. This is what we came here for, right here. He's not going to be tired anytime soon. We're just going to have to let him run because... I've only got 16-pound test line. And uh, this fish is not going to tire anytime soon, I can guarantee it. But the way he's fighting, Alex, it's a monster. It's a monster. I just replayed that one. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, this is a big fish, fella. There you go, there you go, center rod, center rod, center rod. Did you get him? Nope. You know, yeah? I can't tell you. Uh, nope. Get it out of here anyway. Get it out of here. Oh, God, this is a big fish. 
Get this other rod out of here too. Get this one out of here too. Oh guys, this is what we came here for, man. Get that one out of here. Why did I? I love it, man. I love it. Alex, this, there's no way we're getting this fish is just gonna be here a while. Flathead catfish. And he's a big boy. We hooked him in two and a half foot of water on a big live green sunfish, man. And he's just running. Alex, he's a big fish, man. What we came here, folks. We took the uh, we took the dragonfly airboat and beached it on a big old sandbar that the rains had turned into an island. And we're just sitting out here on an island in the middle of the river. This is a big one, man. I've had him on for about 10 minutes already, and he's he's nowhere near ready. Alex, we got to get him away from this cover over here. We got to keep him away from the current, man. We got to keep him away from the current. I got to get him turned back into the. Oh, guys, this is a monster. He is a monster, Alex. Oh gosh. Hey, you got another one. You got another one. He's in it. He's in it. He's in it. Don't set the hook. He's in it. Go ahead. Go ahead and just tighten it up. Do you feel me? No. Okay, good. Don't worry about that one. We got this other one on. We got to take care of this one first before we catch any more. This is what we came for right here. He's just, he's just running, man. He's running me all the way down the river. We may have to get... We can't get in the airboat. We can't go follow him in the airboat. Alex, there's no way. There's no way we're going to be able to follow this fish, dude. We're just going to have to tire him out. We get to get all the lines in. Every single line. Every line in, Alex. He's, he's, get, Alex. Yeah, get that out of my way. Hurry up. Get that out of my way. He's running, man. He's halfway down the river banks already, guys, and he's out in the current. I gotta try to get him back out of that current because I can't fight him in that current with this kind of tackle. We've been fighting this fish so long that uh, the batteries on the camera uh, were running out and we failed to notice that. So by the time we landed the fish, we were so excited, we were showing the fish off to the camera, and I can almost see the sweat coming off the brow of my cameraman as he knew that we'd run out of battery. So we weren't able to share uh, the landing of this fish, uh, but thank goodness we had some cell phones and we were able to get some good pictures for you. My dad started this store back in 1951, and uh, all of us kids started down here from a young age on, and I've probably been in, active in this store for the last 45 years. Well, you're right. It certainly is a hot topic. Uh, you do see it quite a bit on social media, and people are very passionate about it. Uh, you know, there's two sides to every story, and on this side, the first side is these fish. They're, they're not a sustainable resource if they're over-harvested. Uh, some of these big, giant catfish, they take 30 to 40, 50 years to grow to size that they're going into these lakes, and it's something that's not going to be reproduced quick. Uh, on the other side, you know, Pay Lakes, they provide a great opportunity for people to go catch a trophy fish who don't have that opportunity elsewhere. The Pay Lake is not the only problem that we have. The, the Pay Lake, yeah, they increase the demand for the big fish, but the commercial fishermen and the over-harvesting of the larger fish is what really puts the pressure on, the, on our species today. It takes a fish over five pounds to produce the eggs that we need to, to replenish our species. If they continue to take the larger species that produce the larger amount of eggs, then our species, the numbers are going to decline rapidly. And that's what's happening today. Another issue we have um, with illegal harvest is the fact that there are a lot of people who cannot obtain valid state licenses that still go out and fish our, our public waters. And they catch big giant catfish and they take them home. Um, it's not a, a topic that's uh, easy to discuss. Um, everybody wants to be politically correct, uh, but that's not my job here today. It's my job to tell the story. The only problem you've got is uh, up at the dam, you've got a lot of illegal immigrants 
Uh, they catch the, the bait fish, they'll eat them. Uh, they don't throw nothing back. They're taking all the breeding fish. They make a mess up there. Uh, and in defense of the DNR, they go up there and ticket them and they just throw the tickets in the trash. So it's beginning to be a problem. Usually you could go up there and take somebody and fish for all summer long and everybody would catch fish, but they'll take everything out and eat it or take it home with them or just kill it. I don't know what the answer is to put a stop to it, but uh, it's a big problem that needs to be taken care of some way. I'll never forget the time that I went to Spain uh, to catch the uh, European Wells cat. I flew into Madrid and took a high-speed train down to uh, Toledo, where I fished the Tajo River. I had rented a room just a hundred yards away from the dam of the river. Just below the dam was a deep hole that appeared to be at least 30 feet deep in some areas. So I was sure this section of the river would hold the mighty Wells catfish. I don't know, I hope I'm not just here wasting my time, but I mean, I'm having a good time. I came here all the way from the United States spent an enormous amount of time and resources. I spent three days scouting. I spent a day and a half just getting my fishing license. <laughs> Major challenge, just getting the license. But I'm here now, it's prime time. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. If there is big fish in here, we're gonna catch one. And if there's not, there's not. I've got three lines set, we're gonna give it all we got. Um, I was hoping to catch a giant Wells cat, but in fact, I, I should have gone north to the Rio Ebro. A year later, I was back in Spain. This time around, I rented a car and drove north to the Rio Ebro. It's a long drive to Caspa, Spain, but we didn't mind. It's such a beautiful scenic route that we enjoyed every minute of the journey. I had rented a room just a few hundred yards off the edge of the river, and once again I rigged my lines to the best of my ability in hopes of hooking up on a huge Wells cat. I had also reserved a boat so I could begin to learn the layout of the river and where these mighty fish might be hanging out, just waiting to be caught. I fished for several days and had figured out that the fish were piled up in the channels and on the ledges of the channel. But by the time I had figured it all out, I had to go home empty handed once again. I wasn't about to accept defeat on my mission to catch a giant Wells cat in northeastern Spain. So I readied all of my tackle and headed out for a third attempt. final attempt uh, to catch a giant Wells cat out of the Rio Ebro in northeastern Spain. I've uh, been here two times before and fallen short on the goal of, of catching this particular species, but um, I had to stop here in Madrid. I absolutely love Old Town Madrid, so I stopped here just to uh, kind of walk around and break up, the, break up the, the trip a little bit. It's been a long journey just to get here. And uh, so I got a little bit of food and tomorrow morning I'm gonna rent a car. And uh, I think I've got about a four and a half or five hour drive uh, into Caspe. And uh, hopefully by tomorrow afternoon, uh, at this time I'll have some lines set. And there's nothing like having some lines set as the sun is setting because you know that those fish are gonna turn on and hopefully we'll hook up.
After a couple hours of driving, I decided to visit the Cathedral Basilica of Our Lady of the Pillar, a Roman Catholic church in the city of Saragossa, Aragon, Spain. The basilica venerates the Blessed Virgin Mary under her title, Our Lady of the Pillar, praised as the mother of Hispanic peoples by Pope John Paul II. These seashells are found throughout the various towns and villages in Spain. They are significant as they mark the pilgrimage routes leading to the shrine of St. James the Apostle in the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela, Spain, where the remains of the saint are buried. I myself have seen this catacomb with my very own eyes. It all started in Fatima, Portugal years ago, where my wife and I toured this pilgrimage route all the way to the cathedral in Santiago, where I became a knight of the Portuguese royal house. But that is a whole other story. After leaving Saragossa, I continued northward on my journey back to the Rio Ebro in northeastern Spain. I couldn't help myself but pay a visit to the old town of Soria to marvel at the ancient Roman architecture that has withstood the test of time. It was an amazing experience, especially since I knew I'd probably never visit this part of the world again. We ended up not making it to camp in time to fish that evening, so we got a good night's sleep, then headed out first thing in the morning. On this trip, I consulted with my close friend Steve Donegan to make sure I had the best possible chance of hooking up on a huge Welsh catfish. Steve operates a professional catfishing service here on the Rio Ebro, much like I do back home on the Ohio River, so I knew I was in good hands. He suggested that we fish from the shore and run the baits out to them where they typically hang out during the day, which is the edge of the river channel in the deepest sections of the river. I get my sandwiches out. Third time is a charm, man. 
<laughs> pressure on him. Yeah, yeah. Some pressure on him. Get that rod down. Try and keep them under tension. He's coming towards He's you. He's towards me. Yeah. Now, if while you're fighting this fish, another rod goes. Oh, um, yeah, I can feel him head shaking now, man. He's trying to get off. He's shaking his head. If another rod goes while you're playing that one, I'll strike him, just set it, and then put it back. The bigger. Okay. This could very well be my biggest catfish of my life, right here. It is possible. It's possible. This could be the one that I've been seeking for a lifetime. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Slow and steady wins the race right here. Slow and steady. What do we do? This is the first one. We are going to just slacken off a little bit, yeah? Okay, okay, okay. 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 Yeah, well, let's not pull the hook, right? We don't want to pull the hook. Getting tired, man, getting tired. My arms cramping up. He's coming to the surface. He's coming to the surface. It's a big part. Yeah. Not what we came for. Typical carp fight. He's followed the lead all the way and now he's stopped. Now, now he's realizing he's hooked. But that is my biggest carp I've ever caught in my life right there. I'll tell you right now. Yeah, he's looking at it. Oh, there you go. It's a very nice, it's one of the, I bet it's probably the largest carp I've caught on uh, rod and reel before. So it was a, a, a nice fighting fish, beautiful fish. One of the prizes here in Europe. So we're going to make sure that we put him back safely here and make sure other people get opportunity to catch him. I'm going to put him back. Just like that, he gets to go back home, or she. Nobody else get a chance to enjoy that. Well, you know, this is my third and final attempt to catch a Wells cat here in northeastern Spain. You know, I finally hooked up, had a great fight. I was really hopeful, and you know, it's a bloody carp, right? Not that I have anything against carp, but it's just not what I'm after. But I'm not here to pretend I'm the world's best angler. I'm just here to pit my skills, my 25 years of professional angling experience to the test against the world's most formidable opponents. The whisker fish, the catfish species of the world, and the Wells cat has always been on the top of my list, on my bucket list, and um, it just hasn't happened yet. But how many times can you come to Spain for one species? Well, three was it for me, so. But I'm not giving up yet, we still have a half a day, so let's see what happens. We had a storm blow up, and all of a sudden, the rod just buries, and it just takes off. I always like fishing these storm fronts back home, and uh, sure enough, oh, it's a big fish, it's a big fish. This is a big fish, this is what we came here for right here at the last hour man our trip ends this evening we're about ready to wrap it up and we hooked up and it's a big one man exactly what we came here for oh man it's a big fish man he's still running he's still running been here a while now. I just want to, I just want to see this fish. Oh my gosh. Come on. Come on. And now it's starting to downpour. Hopefully we can get him in. I'm going to get soaked, man. But I don't even care. I don't even care. There he goes. There he goes. Ah! Ah! 
Come on, come on. Come on. I was finally hooked up with a mighty Wells catfish, and after 10 minutes of fighting the fish, my arms were beginning to tire, but I was determined to land this fish. This is why I don't want to be wasting a bunch of time winding up all of the rods that every time we rebaited because I knew it was going to be a challenge and I didn't want to burn my arms out and they're already and this is why right here he's coming in now he's probably about 40 meters out he's headed this way big flathead. They fight just like a flathead. Keep their head down the whole time, which is what I was hoping to find out. Sure enough, man, they're just like our flatheads back home. Except you catch a lot of them during the daytime. Oh, it's a monster, man. Yeah, man. All right, let, go. let me do the hook first of all. My biggest whisker fish ever, right here and it took a Wells cat in northeastern Spain. Our biggest problem here is, is the illegal harvesting of the catfish and the carp. There's uh, certain groups here uh, being caught by the police on numerous occasions, and each time they've been caught, they've actually been released because there was no system in place to actually find them. Uh, now there is, and action's being taken, but these people have been taking fish out by the tons. I released my Wells cat, we got another strike, and my cameraman couldn't believe that I asked him to switch places, let me have the camera, and I gave him the rod. I wanted him to have a memorable experience to take home for himself. Hey Eddie, I think this is a good catch. It's good that you gave it, gave me the chance to, to take it out. But I think it's, a, it's gonna be bigger than yours. I can't believe that, that the director told me to take a chance with to with the struggle with the rod that was on and I took it and I got this specimen really thankful for for the opportunity this fish it's a great experience big cat well well cat and now we're gonna release it Nos encontramos en el río Ebro donde nos, nos han dicho que se encuentra Whiskel Seeker. La gente de la zona le ha visto por aquí, nos ha informado y vamos a buscarle. Este hombre de negocios, un empresario que dejó todo en la, búsqueda, en la búsqueda del bagre más grande del mundo, que dicen que se encuentra en estas aguas. También nos han dicho que ya lo ha pescado. Entonces vamos a buscarle a ver si nos da una entrevista y nos cuenta su experiencia. Les informa desde el Canal 23, María Pérez. Finally. After 35 years, I have caught the largest catfish of my career, but the celebration is cut short as I must return home now and deal with the reality that my home waters are no longer suitable for my business. So where will I operate? We won't be stocking this weekend, but next weekend we will bring in 6,000 pounds of flatheads and we will bring them in every week. We have 30,000 pounds in the holding pond right now. We will also start treating the lake every week, starting this week, to start their cycle. So come feel the burn. It means they know that they just put a 
copper sulfate is what they put in that pay lake to make those fish move. Um, it depletes the oxygen in the water, so they're constantly moving, trying to find that oxygen. It's also making them feed to try to gain their energy back, so you're gonna catch fish. The burn part, that kind of gets me because it, it hurt, the copper sulfate harms the fish, and they actually do get burns on these, you know, burn marks on these fish. Um, it, it hurts their gills. It basically, if they don't get caught five or six times put back in, that copper sulfate's gonna kill that fish and they're gonna end up in a dumpster, a field. They ain't gonna go on a plate, you know, for someone to eat. They don't allow these trophy lakes for people to keep these fish. They wanna get as many catches out of these fish as they can before they need to go back to these public rivers to get more fish to restock their lake just to do that same thing all over again. So as you can see, I have some serious decisions to make. I've seen such a major decline in the numbers of big fish harvested on my services over the last few years that I decided to pack it up and move to South Texas. been driving about 20 hours straight through right now and uh, we've still got about four or five hours to go uh, before we can get to Talkin Reservoir uh, but it's gonna be well worth it there's some giant fish in there uh, I was down here just a couple months ago to test it out and uh, ended up catching an 84 pound blue cat and uh, also hooked an even bigger fish but it broke my rod in half because I, I didn't have my best tackle with me but this time we are well prepared on this reservoir. I will find the fish, and I will once again taste success. But I can't help to ask myself, for how long? So I find myself standing on the bow of the crown jewel, overlooking this magnificent place where it all began. I will survive. I pray the Lord bless this operation, and may the catfishermen of the world become better stewards with what they've been given.